Good morning. This particular video I have prepared for rational bubble testing. So, bubble testing is done by many methods. One of the method is variants of augmented Dickey-Fuller test. Different variations of augmented Dickey-Fuller test helps us to identify the bubbles. Now, I want to show you a research paper on that this research paper is here in MPRA which is Munich Personal Repec Archive. This paper is by Itamar Kaspi who works in Bank of Israel and he has started this work using eViews. This is the number of that paper. You can I am just copying this so that it becomes with it stays with you. So I'm just copying this and pasting it in the Excel here you can just link click on this link and you will get this now interesting thing over here is augmented dickey fuller test which measures stationarity it was initially not intended to measure bubble so what stationarity comes with? It comes with certain positives and obviously certain negatives. So what are the positives? It is kind of an elasticity of a time series. So if the time series goes away from it, it comes down. Whether away in the upside or away in the downside. Second is unchanged mean and variance. So over a period of time, the mean of the time series and the variance of the time series remain kind of, I should not say constant, but varies in a very narrow range. Third thing is mean reverting feature as I told in the previous video as well that suppose the mean is around $100 and uh, it goes to $130 on the upside it has a tendency to come back to $100. Similarly if it goes down to $60 it also has a tendency to come up to $100 that is called mean reverting. However this is used Precisely for the predictability of the time series. So if a time series is stationary, the holy grail of predictability is reached. That means we can predict the time series. And it moves like an oscillating dipole and it oscillates between two points, two extremes and we can predict it. However, this comes with a negative parameter also. The negative parameter is it has a component of mildly explosive exponent which is basically a mild bubble so so many positives come with stationarity but there is one negative which comes up with it is also called as there's an explosive intent small explosive intent which is called bubble so what is bubble divergence of the artificial valuation from the real valuation in no time so i'll give you an example very rudimentary example Suppose a company stock on a day is $100, next day if it is $300, then that's a bubble because fundamental valuations cannot change in just one night. But the perceived valuation changes because of any news or because of any insider trading or because of any other information asymmetry. So what happens in a short period of time because of all these parameters mentioned the prices vary a lot a lot and the prices go away from the and away when I say away means both in positive also in, is in negative. It either goes in the positive direction or it comes in the negative direction but it there is a divergence created from the real valuation to the artificial valuation and that divergence is created in almost no time that's bubble precisely that's bubble so adf measures one extreme to the sample to other i will draw your attention to this particular uh, illustration figure one if you see figure one this r1 is the starting of extreme of sample and r2 is one end so what is precisely r1 r1 is precisely the negative side of the sample and R2 is the positive side of the sample or both are extremes. So you start from R1 and go to R2 straightforward 
this is called ADF, augmented Dickey Fuller. So it covers the whole sample in one shot. Whereas RADF, what is RADF? What is the full form of RADF? Right tail augmented Dickey Fuller test. That is right tail, RADF. R stands for right tail. So, if you have seen my previous videos, right tail shows the abnormal positive returns. So, here we are talking about the abnormal positive bubble. Abnormal positive bubble means where the prices go in the positive direction but in a very short period of time and the divergence between the real valuation and the artificial valuation is extremely high in a very short period of time. That is called a positive bubble. So RADF measures positive bubble. Now see what RADF is doing. RADF breaks the sample into various rolling windows. You can see the rolling windows here. One window here, second window here, third window here. And all these three windows are rolling. That means they have certain parts common. So this window, if you see, this window has this and this part common. Similarly, this window has this and this part common. So these are called rolling window or overlapping window. So it reaches from one end to the other end by but by the help of rolling windows. So it is not a continuous measure. Each window gets covered one by another till it reaches the next extreme. Now let's come to SIDF. What is SIDF? SIDF is a mathematical concept that S. S stands for supremum. Supremum is a mathematical concept. I am not making it complicated. I want to make it simple. So what is SIDF? All these windows like in RIDF windows have different starting point. You can see this is starting here. Second window is starting here. Third window is starting here. But in SIDF all the windows have same starting point. The starting point is the same. The length of the window is different. So first window length is smaller. Second window length is almost half the total sample and the third window is complete which is the third window of SIDF is basically ADF. You can see that this is the special case third window of SIDF is basically a normal ADF. Okay. So what is happening here? Window size is different but the starting point for all the window are the same. And the sample is usually covered in 3 to 4 recursive calculation. So what we get from here, if it is, now let's come back to here. If this p value or probability value, suppose p value is 0. So I taught you a small poem in the previous videos, p low null go. So if p value is low, so null value will go, then what will stay? Alternate will stay. Alternate will stay mean the series is stationary. If the series is stationary, that means series is trend stationary and having mildly explosive exponent, which is basically bubble. It is a technical term. We write it like mildly explosive exponent is present. But what is the meaning of it? In a rough way, in a rudimentary way, in a simple way, it means presence of bubble is detected. So I repeat. So P suppose P value is low. So P low null go. So what is the null here? This is null. So null hypothesis is out. What stays? Alternate stays. Alternate hypothesis says series is trend stationary and having mildly explosive exponent. This mildly explosive exponent is the technical name of bubble. So what we have done here? We have calculated bubble detection test. So if p value is 0 or lower than 5% then bubble is present. If p value is above 5% then bubble is absent. This is the agenda of this entire video. So which is more accurate? Obviously SADF is more accurate compared to RADF and ADF. So generally first we do ADF test then we do a RADF test followed by SADF test. That will be captured using eViews in another video. Thank you.